Bang! Needs and odds. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And today we are checking out the Work Sharp Precision Adjustable Knife Sharpener. Now, I did already put the base. I've already used it also. So now I'm doing a review on it. This part right here just clicks right into this base. It's very easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. This part right here is separate and just clicks right down in there it's kind of hard to get out after you click it in there so i'm not going to take it off and then this part comes separate very easy just clicks right in right here magnetic very easily and then the clamp also very simple magnetic bang clicks right in and then when you want to turn the clamp you just push this button right back here push it and you turn it pretty easy you just push back here and turn and then to adjust the clamp to get a knife in there you just untwist it here and twist it there and you clamp in the knife today we are going to sharpen the cjrb mini felspar and right there lock it in so it doesn't sit there and maneuver on us. You see how you got that, um, the first part of the jaws and then the second part right there. Tighten this down really good so it doesn't come loose on you. I'm going to mark it though just in case so it doesn't move around on me. I'm just going to put a line there and then I'll flip it. Put a line right here on the other side. Just so I know right where it's supposed to go. So, I have used it already. Um, and now I'm going to do the review on it. I pretty much already have my opinion on it. Now, um, I will say I am a freehand knife sharpener. So this is pretty simple for me to do. Plus, I started out using fixed angled systems. So... Uh, this is pretty easy for me to just take out of the box and do a video on. Now, it does have little stops here, if you look, so you can set it up to where you don't go past where you want to, so that it will stop right where you want it to, and then where it'll fall right where you want it to. So, like this one right here, I want to move up just a little bit, so that it can lay like that. And then you can bring it over to the side which is really cool. I like that. This thing just, you know, basically free moves and then the stones just rotate. Now the diamonds, you don't need any lubrication or anything for. I do recommend using um, like soap and water on the ceramic. It does help it stay clean. You can use it dry, but it will build up pretty quickly. You can adjust your angle right here. See how it goes up and down. We are going to put ours right at 20 degrees for this knife. I feel like that's a good angle for this thickness and everything. So there also is <clears throat> something else I'm going to talk about, about the ceramic plate. I also don't feel like the 600 grit diamond is quite a 600. I feel like it's a little bit higher grit than that. I have a lot of 600 grit diamond stones. I probably have seven right now um and all of my 600 grits even after lots of use are more coarse than this one that i've only used once so you know anyways my point is is i feel like it's a little bit higher grit that being said i also feel like that the ceramic um that th th it'd be nice to have a stone in between the 600 and the ceramic just i, I feel like even though I don't feel like it's, I feel like it's a little bit higher uh, grit than a 600. I also feel like uh, another stone would be nice in between that and the ceramic. I feel like you have to spend a little bit of extra time on the ceramic if you want a polished finish. Now, if you're not really caring about a polished finish and you just want to use it to knock off the burr, that's fine. Or if you just want to use it to you know, to put a little extra on the, the, the blade without taking the entire grit out you know without polishing it that's also fine um there's also a certain way you kind of want to use the ceramic that i find that works better than um than the conventional way 
but let's get into sharpening really quick i also want to say that i am going to take down my um my video on um the the work sharp the ken onion work sharp um video i have like the first one so i made a few of them actually but the first one it has like over seven thousand views on it and i do not like the way i did it I rushed it. I, you know, I was swamped th those couple weeks and I didn't read the directions. I just watched a video on it and I did what I saw in the video. The difference was, was they were using a kitchen knife. I was using a pocket knife and the video wound up coming out bad and I did not do the, the machine justice. I feel like I could have done a lot better job on it and I should have. And that is a hundred percent my fault. So I'm going to redo that video. I'm going to take that video down and I am going to redo that video. Now I did already do a part two where I did my opinion. I'm not going to take that video down because I feel like that video is just fine. But the first one I am going to, um, I have been getting a lot of comments and everybody's right. You know, I, I shouldn't have, um, I should have read the directions and it would have been a lot better. A lot of people didn't understand, though, in that video, though, that they're seeing something that was done weeks before, not, you know, during the video. Anyways, let's talk about this one. So, for the first um, side, I'm going to start off by, by basically just rubbing. But when I finish this side, I am going to try to get my grip pattern to all go the same direction by doing these swipes. You can go back and forth, but you don't want to put too much pressure. You don't want to put too much pressure because of this. See how it kind of moves just a little bit. It's actually very sturdy and it does have some good weight, but it's easy to put that little bend, which will change your angle. So light pressure. And even if I go up and down, I'm going to finish by going at an angle like this because I want my grip pattern to all run at an angle. So if you look here, this is what I mean. I want my grip pattern to run at an angle just like that. This is a factory edge and they run, they tend to run straight up and down, which is fine, it's just preference. I prefer my grip pattern to run at an angle like I was showing you like on this how the grit is running this way you know like like that it's basically running towards the direction my blade is cutting rather than just straight so that's why I will finish off by going at an angle Now you want to make sure when you're sharpening you don't go like this and go off the edge. If you do that you can round the tip by doing that. If you go like this and you go off the edge you can round and chip the tip. So try to make sure you finish in the middle of the stone on the tip. So meaning the middle of the stone the tip finishes like right there. You know when you're going up and down don't let it go off the edge or off the tip. And then they have this little handle here you can hang on to, or you can hang on to the sides. It's up to you, really. Now you can go up like this, and then once you get to the tip, push up like this. And then once you get to the tip, push up so you don't never come off. If you're really good, you can... Um, you can stop it yourself before you go off. Let's look at it. Oh yeah, it looks really good. We do have a burr all the way down, so now we are going to flip. And do the other side. Do 
these things have like a little detent right here so that's what's clicking in somewhere and then it clicks in place probably right here yeah this little plastic piece right here you can see right there and right there We do have a burr all the way up and down, but I do need to get the heel just a little bit better. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna get the tip just a little tiny bit more. All right, let's flip to the 600. I'm gonna flip the blade over so, because the burr now is on this side if you don't know what a burr is, I have lots of sharpening videos with lots of sharpening information, lots of freehand and other systems in my playlist. But a burr is basically when you're sharpening one side of the blade and you're sharpening it, the blade start, the steel starts to roll over to the other side. And that's what I'm rubbing right here. When I rub the edge, I'm rubbing that steel and I feel it. So then I go over to this edge and sharpen that side and and it just keeps folding over until we knock it off. And then when we knock it off, it'll be a very acute edge, an apex. So now we're at the 600. I do recommend doing this marker trick though right here. The first time I used it, I did mess that up um, and it moved a little bit. And even though I knew about right where it was, I wasn't perfect. So now I'm gonna make sure I do that every time just in case. And it was more of a pressure thing. I, um, it's not that I put too much pressure, it's just that um, it moved just a little bit, not much, but it did. And that just that little bit changes the angle. You also want to make sure this stone is nice and flat on the edge when you're using it. Make sure you're not teetering like this and getting the corner of the stone or anything like that. Mm, pretty decent. Okay, now let's check the burr. Very nice. Let's get the other side. And then what we'll do is we'll do a burr removal, and then I will polish the edge, even though this is D2, and normally I wouldn't go with a polished edge, 
just to do it for the video, for the sake of the video. I don't know if I will record the entire polishing, but I'll at least record some of what I'm talking about and how to use the ceramic. And then I'll just clip forward to the end, to the, to the last deburl. But I'll show you where I would keep it at if I didn't use the ceramic. Which, most likely, you're not going to use every time anyways. That's what you don't want to do, right there. Let's check it. Oh yeah, very nice. Mm, a little tiny bit more at the heel. Now this knife had already been pre-sharpened. Now I did have an edge already put on this, which might have been a different angle because it was a free hand edge, so I'm sure it was. We have a burr all the way down, so let's do a burr removal, then we'll take a look at it. So with this burr removal, we are just going to go... Now we will flip it back over, do another burr removal, we'll do this a couple times. Nice and gentle too, don't really put any pressure on this. To get rid of that squeak, we are going to put a little bit of Tough Light. This is a dry oil. Back over again. One more. Make sure that's good. Yeah, it feels really good. All right, now let's look at this before I go to polishing. Let's take a look at this edge and wipe it off. Nice and flat. The grip pattern looks really good. Just flip it over. Let's look at the other side. Now, if you're worried about scratching your knife or anything like that, you might want to tape off the spine and stuff like that. You are going to get a little bit of steel particles that could possibly get in the pivot. So you might want to tape off those areas. That's up to you. I don't mind taking this thing apart and cleaning it very quick. But if you do, then yes, you definitely want to tape off. Now, for the ceramic stone. Now, I personally like to use soap and water on my ceramics because it stops the, the buildup. So we're going to flip over to the ceramic right here. It stops the buildup from being too bad. I just take a little bit of dish soap, put it in a bottle, put some water in there shake it up really good and i usually keep my ceramic stone lubricated and like i said it stops it from building up now if you do use it dry or if it starts building up you can use barkeeper's friend baking soda or just soap and water and a scrub brush sos pad anything like that will work just fine now i noticed with this now you can first start off by hitting it just like this but you want to eventually switch angles and go just like this. That's it, side to side. 
and possibly even the whole time. One, when you go like this, it tends to push the blade down a little bit and gives it a little bit of bounce. And these stones are so flat that the tiniest little bit of movement or fluctuation in angle <clears throat> from you pushing or anything will leave little spots in the blade and it won't be completely polished. I doubt we'll get it to 100% polished, but either way, we definitely won't get it if we do it like that. So by doing it like this, you have a little bit better of a chance of getting a real polish. Like I said, you can do it like this at first, just to basically get rid of a lot of the grip pattern, but you want to finish off by just hitting it side to side, especially when you get to the tip. Don't let it go off the stone. But that, that 600 grit edge before we started using the ceramic, that was a very sharp edge. And that would be just fine for you to stop right there. You don't even need to go to the ceramic if you don't want to. Now, like I was saying before, I do think that if we had a... Um, I don't know, like a 1200 grit diamond, I think that it would possibly polish fully, like very quickly, to the point to where we would be able to already be pretty much polished, but we're not too far away. Like I said, I don't know if we'll get to an absolute mirror. It is hard to get all the grit pattern out without spending a long time on this. Um, I mean, the, the last one I did where I did get a, a pretty good mirror took a long time, <clears throat> but you don't have to have an absolute mirror edge. So it's not that big of a deal to just get it as good as you can. And you know, you'll be just fine. We're going to look at it after this. So you can see how it looks with the time we have on it. This was all done in real time. I'm not even going to skip forward on the ceramic. I do think some steels are going to polish up easier than others. Um, the edge might not be as good with a polish, but I'm just saying like I do think that some knives or some steel will polish easier than others and then others will take a lot longer one of the reasons why we're using the steel we're using so this video doesn't wind up being you know longer than people are willing to watch I'm lowering my head down underneath and making sure I'm getting the very tip. So right now I'm looking right now underneath here and making sure that's hitting the tip right here on this, this side of the stone. at it all right yeah it's looking pretty good especially for the time being what i will do is i will show it to you then I will pause and I will spend a little bit more time on it off camera and we'll come back and do a burr removal. I just want you to see what it looks like and how polished it is with the time we've spent. Pretty polished. It actually works very, very well. This system is very impressive. I think this is going to be 
probably one of the most popular uh, stones or popular systems. Um, hopefully they come out with more uh, stone variations and stuff. All right, I am going to spend just a few minutes off camera so you guys don't have to sit through it and then we will come back to the to the burr removal and finish the video all right i probably spent about 10 15 minutes off camera uh, probably about 10 minutes off camera i'm going to yeah about 10 15 minutes off camera let's just make sure this as a good burr removal, we still are going to strop it. But I want to make sure this burr is good. All right, let's loosen this thing up. Let's so now this you can just pop right out, then loosen it up so you don't have to loosen up inside the machine, which is very handy. Just click it right back in. Now let's drop it, we'll look at the edge, and we'll test it, and then we'll look at it compared to a couple other edges. I'm just dropping it on a leather strap with white compound. White compound seems to be my favorite. It leaves the most bite in the edge, in my opinion. Other ones just seem like they take out the bite that I really want in the edge. Oh, yeah, guys. All right, let's cut this receipt. Very nice. Nice and slow now. Very nice. Let's do a little thin little slivers. These things are very slivery. You guys get the point. It's very sharp. Very nice. Let's take a look at it. My wife in the background making noise. <laughs> Don't look at me barely, like that. Um, go ahead. Go, I'm just messing with you. So you see it's nice and polished. Um, but you still see the grit that's really in there. Let me really wipe it off. You can really see the grit. It's kind of still behind it. It's not that bad, but it did take quite a bit of time. Um, let me grab a knife really quick that I just did actually this morning. But I freehanded this. Here is a free-handed edge that I did this morning. And this one, I wasn't going for an absolute mirror. Uh, maybe I should pull out one that has an absolute mirror so you can see. But the point is, is that both of them look very similar. They look very good. I'm going to wipe this edge off. Looks like it's just got some stuff on it. The edge looks very, very good. So basically you can get a, an incredible edge off of this system. I highly, highly recommend it for anybody that, um, you know, needs to sharpen their knife. It's only, what was it, 60 bucks, um, which is an incredible deal. Um, I don't think the stones, the ceramic will last forever, or at least a long, long time. The diamonds, I don't think they're going to last a very long time because they're just not that big. Um, there's not going to be a lot of diamond on it. Basically, this does give you an incredible edge. So, definitely an edge you can be proud of. Um, 
And if you spend your time on it and go through the stones and make sure you cover the grip pattern very nice, make sure your, your angle to your edge is nice and flat. If you do that from the first stone, from the 320, you will have, it, it will be a lot easier. So I think the, 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 the biggest problem with people is going to be rushing. Don't rush. Take your time. Don't push real hard on the stones. You know, um, be nice and gentle and make sure your edge is flat. Cover your grip pattern really good and you will be astounded with how good your edges can be off of this system. This is an incredible system. Like I said, I do think the 600 grit is a little bit higher than a 600 grit. It's not that big of a deal. It takes out the 320 grit just fine. Um, I think it would have been nice to have one more diamond and then the ceramics then i think you'd get a little bit better performance out of the ceramic or at least not be able to spend so much time on it but in all reality you can get an incredible edge very very fast off of this system very fast and especially if you're only wanting to go to the 600 grit diamond which will probably be the the most popular edge off of the system and then just knock off your burr with the ceramic you can get an edge in just a couple minutes. So, um, yeah, very fast system, uh, budget-friendly, and will work on any steel because it's diamonds. So, yeah, um, this is definitely an A-plus in my opinion, especially for the price. Now, I don't know how much it's going to be or if they're going to come out with more stones for this system. I, I hope they do um, because... It uh, It's going to eventually need a replacement stone. I'm sure they will have them. I'm sure Workshop will take care of that. And hopefully they wind up coming up with some more stones so people can have different types of edges and different types of finishes. I think that'll be amazing. Um, I love that you can set your angle so easily. Um, it does seem like the angle's right. Um, I, I love how um, this thing, it, you know, you just pop it in and out. And then when you want to undo the clamp, you can just pop this thing out and undo it. Uh, if you look in here, you'll see it's metal. So you probably, if you're worried about your knife, you're probably going to want to put a little tape on it. Now, if you do that, this is very important. So please listen. If you do that, make sure the number of layers on this side is equal to this side. So if you're using electrical tape and you put one piece of electrical tape on this side, only put one piece on this side. Because by having one side thicker than the other side, you will change the angle. Don't do that. Just make sure you um, you know put the, the, the same amount of tape on each side and you'll get incredible performance. Now this, it scratched this blade up just a little bit. Not too bad. Just a couple little scuff marks. Not that big of a deal. This um, is a straight user, and that's not a big deal. It's going to get scratched anyways. But if you're going to use an expensive knife, one that you're going to be worried about, then make sure you uh, you know you you tape it off. And I wish they would have put rubber feet. So what are my complaints? So one, I do wish they would have used rubber inside of here, so it didn't scratch things. Another thing, I did have. A couple times where like I was getting stuck trying to turn it, but really I think it was just it, could, it was only wanting to turn one direction, but you can fight it that other direction. I don't know, um, but for the most part, this thing turns just fine as long as you just keep turning it the same direction. So you want the white and then turn it. Right there, I was popping and then turn it that way and then make sure you turn it back the same way you turned it. You'll, you'll fight it the other way. Um, another thing is I do wish that they had the third, a third stone before the ceramic. I don't know how they could have did it because this is a tri stone, but, um, or maybe even two of these. I wish they would have maybe had two of these where you had, uh, from maybe like a 200 up to maybe a 1500 grit and then the ceramic. That would have been really cool. Um, it is a little light. So when you're pushing on it, it does tend to want to do that. So you do have to hold it. Um, it would have been cool if maybe it had like a heavy base down here. I mean, it's not light. 
but it also is light at the same time. I mean, what I'm trying to say is it has a little bit of weight, but it's very light. So it's very easy to, to make it tilt when you're putting pressure down. So if you're not careful, what you'll do is you'll, and I'm not barely putting any pressure. So it would have been nice if it had just a little bit of weight back there because just a little bit of weight would make it very sturdy. I'm barely touching it right now. So, um, eh, other things, um, no, I think, I think this is a great system. You do have to watch these little rubber things. You do start pushing them after you smack them a few times, as you can see. So you want to keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, man, this is an awesome system. Not too many complaints, at least as of right now for the couple knives I've sharpened with it. it it's incredible. Like I said, though, make sure you use this marker trick. I messed up my first knife because, like I said, it came off of angle and I wasn't a thousand percent on where it was sitting. Like I was pretty sure, but it, you don't have to be but off by a little tiny bit and it makes a huge difference. Thank you guys for watching. Work sharp. Peace.